Hi, my name is Glenn Weidrib, and today we're going to look at how to make $10 trillion. Let's begin by looking at the amount of money that is spent worldwide each year on energy, electricity, and chemicals. Fossil fuel costs roughly $4 trillion each year. This includes $2.5 trillion for oil, $1 trillion for coal, and a half a trillion for natural gas. Out of the $4 trillion for fossil fuel, roughly $1 trillion is used to make electricity, and roughly $1 trillion is used to make chemicals. And an additional $5 trillion is related to non-fuel chemical making. In other words, making electricity and making chemicals costs the world approximately $7 trillion each year. Also, companies that do this are typically worth 1.5 times their annual revenue. Therefore, if they were replaced, the new companies would be worth roughly $10 trillion. In theory, this could be done by developing custom machines that automate the construction of next generation nuclear power sites. This would drive down the cost of the green option to below that of the carbon option. And customers would then buy green to save money. For details on automated construction, see videos 11 and 12. Roughly one third of carbon dioxide comes from making electricity and roughly one third comes from making chemicals and materials. Therefore, if these were decarbonized, carbon dioxide emissions would decrease three to one. And this could be done without asking someone to do something they don't want to do. In other words, we would not need to ask regions to incur additional costs and become less competitive. Okay, so why has this not been done? The problem is investors avoid projects that are too complicated and automating nuclear site construction falls in this category. Bill Gates refers to this as the big R&D problem. In response, he set up a venture capital firm called Breakthrough Energy Ventures that focuses on large projects. However, automating site construction is probably too big even for them. To move this forward, initial R&D would probably need climate money. This is money that is not looking for a return on investment and is instead looking to save the planet from climate change. Sources of climate money include high net worth individuals, foundations, and governments. For details, see video number three. Okay, so what might climate money do? Well, they could pay engineers to do rough designs of facilities that produce electricity and chemicals and estimate costs based on different assumptions. For example, they could assume construction is automated as suggested in previous videos and see if they can make electricity and chemicals at a cost less than the traditional fossil fuel based approach. And they could build databases of possible site locations worldwide and have the computer designed facilities at each location. In essence, they could look for ways to take market share away from existing suppliers. Entrepreneurs and investors could then use this information to gain wealth. And as a side effect, carbon dioxide emissions would decrease. This is how one uses capitalism to tackle the climate problem. In theory, national climate plans could be developed that show how to solve the entire climate problem at low cost. More specifically, a website could be built that creates climate plans, which include designs of green energy production facilities. For details, see videos four and five. To move this forward, engineers would need to build prototypes of machines that automate site construction. At some point, risks to investors 
would become tolerable and they could then build on top of the initial efforts. Working prototypes might cost hundreds of millions of dollars to several billion. This might seem expensive. However, this is small money relative to costs typically associated with climate. In summary, if you want to reduce carbon dioxide emissions three to one without pushing on someone to do something they don't want to do, consider big R&D supported by climate money. For details on how this might work, visit www.aplantosavetheplanet.org. Okay, that's it for me, and I'll talk to you all real soon.